Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And there's more servicemen and women in prison from the first Gulf War 20 years ago who refused to fight. <coughs> and this is squadron leaders, captains, oh. commanders. You never hear that one in the news? No, no I think, absolutely I think not. Lovely. Chris, Chris Coverdale, never heard him say anything that. Yeah. I, 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 I know Chris, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. don't get to talk to him. I don't get to talk to a lot of people because mm. the amount, you know, to be quite honest at the moment, it's just with the book, I'm so intense with the book, yeah. trying to get the, the first volume finished. Well, I'll tell him. Yeah, tell if you get Chris to give us a bell, he's got me numbers. No, no, um, yeah, and it, it turns out I've sort I've got a friend now who's an ex commission officer out of the RAF, and he's he was telling me some stuff, but it's just just I, you know I just, it was amazing what he was telling me, and this is one of the facts he told me, and he said there's commanders and flight commanders in prison who refuse to go and bomb innocent people, and all I said on the radio, you've got all this thing going about at the moment with. Um, you know, help our heroes and stuff like that. Yeah. But I said, well, the real heroes are locked in prison. Yeah. <coughs> They're the ones who refused, yeah. point blank, to yeah. take part in what are crusades. Yeah. It's no different to the 11th century. It's exactly the same principle. We're going out to other countries, killing people, yeah. and it's a crusade. Yeah. That's what they did. That's what Richard I, all of them, they all did this. They all went out onto crusades and they went into lands and they massacred women and children. Yeah. Richard I, Massacred two and a half thousand men, women, and children. Mm. Yeah. But we don't want to face these realities. You know, this is if we look how barbaric we have been, and the people say, "Well, it wasn't us; it was the hierarchy." I said, "No, but we did it. <coughs> it was us. We would serve. You know, it was us. It was the people like us who were serving." I take it that the mainstream media has been told about. Uh, See, so don't about, know, about a lot of people, people don't know. Prison, or, Not a lot or, of people don't know how the mainstream media works. You don't know how it works. Uh, a friend of mine is a very dear friend of two editors. One is the Times, and um, I'm sure the other one's, I can't remember the other one if it's the Independent, but the mainstream media at the moment, the real true people in the media, are, to put it bluntly, pissed off because they can't talk about what they really want to talk about because mm. they're gagged mm. and they don't like being gagged. This is the, so the D notice thing. They're all D notice. They they <laughs> are running D notices. Yeah. They've they've got a very clever way of keeping people. Quiet. Absolutely. And one of the things that people don't know is it's the printing presses. They control the printing presses. So only what what gets printed on newspapers is only what the printers allow to be printed. Do you remember some years ago there was a massive upset at one of the big printing places? There was a massive strike. There was a big pic there was a picture in the Sun newspaper of yeah. two two blokes fighting. I can't remember the name of the place, but it's the main place that they print the newspapers and stuff. Whopping, isn't it? Whopping, whopping, whopping. Yes, massive. There was a massive, thing. and that was all about a certain story that was going to come out. And it, but they wanted to run the story, and the printing presses wouldn't let them run it. And they said, "Well, sod you, we're, we're shutting down." And that's what they did. What was the story? I don't know. Uh -huh. But it's the same process with the music industry. It's, it's everything. It's all about distribution. Yeah, yeah, everything. See, that's what, now that's what costs so much money. And we've been looking into this with the book. It's just ridiculous what they want. I don't know how authors do it. I really don't. You know, I've, I've, I'm so stunned at how much money they actually want. Not to just print the book or to, to publish it, but to distribute the damn thing. <coughs> And promote it. Yeah. And you have to have an, an, a number as well for ISBNs, a book. ISBNs, yeah. An you have to ISBN. Buy, yeah, you have to buy a banker then. You don't, it's not just one. There's about ten of them. You have to buy, it's ridiculous. I didn't know all of this. When I started writing this book, I was like, oh, well, yeah, I'll just write this book and sell it on the website. That's, that's, you know, that's my logic of things. And you cannot actually <laughs> sell a book without that IB that You can number. sell it, but it can't be searched for. You can't sell on Amazon without it. No, you can't. Yeah, you don't Not want to sell on Amazon. Amazon. You're on Amazon, sure. you're lucky you, you can get 10 that. pence a book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, no. that's actual fact. Yeah, you know, I know people. But so, yeah, so the information I get, I'm very privileged in a lot of ways because the people I get to talk to, it's like this, just recently, this mad thing happened. This peer stands up in the House of Lords and says all of this about mm -hmm. Foundation yeah. X, oh, yeah. about this yeah. pumping into yeah. the economy 5 billion and 17 billion. And yeah. they'd already done it in America, they just didn't say that bit. And the, the, uh, the Federal Reserve didn't have a problem taking five billion instantly. They took it. No, oh, we're over that. Us lot, there's no way that we're going to accept it. And the reason we won't accept it is because the national debt is a fallacy. Mm. 
it always has been. It doesn't exist. It never existed. There's enough for everything. It's just that it's being kept by one lot and it's being kept away from the other lot. That's it. That's all that's happening. We just had this confirmed from someone who's quite high up. And they said, yeah, national debt's an absolute, it's false. Now, this peer, sooner or later, is going to start to ask questions and say, well, hold on a minute. Why won't someone from sort of that status in the government make this phone call? And especially when this foundation, X, or this organisation, corporation, can be validated by the six most powerful people in the world. Why won't they do it? Well, the reason they won't do it is because that would alleviate debt, and that's how everyone's controlled debt. Mm. You fall into buying a house, and then when you've bought that You're house, tied. You're very absolutely, tied. absolutely, nobody's going to sort of uh, roots and move. Absolutely, that's why they've got you. They've got you hook, line, and sinker. You do go to come back as even harder. Absolutely. So what happened was, and this is this is just madness. So I was talking to a friend of mine. He said he's got a mate who runs sort of an exclusive taxi service, like a chauffeur service for picking people up. You know, nice cars and all that sort of stuff. So he's picked this geezer up and this geezer's having a natter with him, which is quite unusual. He's had a few to drink, so they get a bit chatty. Mm. A bit like pillar talk. That's the, most people have been shot down by pillar talk. <laughs> 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 but um, Edward the Seven, classic, classic example of that with, um, what was her name? Lily Langtree. Yeah. Lily Langtree. Yeah. Edward the Seven got, he really got in a lot of trouble through pillar talk. But um, so he's chatting, the bloke's chatting. And he's, he's saying about what he does, and he's saying, and they got to talk about the national debt, because the, uh, my friend's <coughs> friend's been listening to what I say, and the bloke turned around and says, there ain't no national debt. He said, it's all a fallacy. He said, who told you that anyway? And this is just a friend of mine. He says, well, tell him he's right, because he's absolutely bang on. There is no national debt. It doesn't exist. He said, and all I kept saying to people is, if you have the power to create money from thin air, why would there ever be debt? because that's what they do. They create money from thin air. There is nothing back it, nothing at all. It's just a piece of paper. And they can create as much of it whenever they want to. Or they can take it away if they want to. They control it, it's a product for you to use. You never own it, it's never yours, because it has a copyright on it. And you can't own anything that's copyrighted to someone else. You've just got the privilege to use it. If you buy a music CD that Alan's made and it has a copyright to Alan, mm -hmm. you don't own that music CD, it's his. You just have the privilege to use it. Yes, you can break it, you can destroy it, burn it, you can eat your dinner off it, fly, launch it up into the oven, but you still don't own it. You never own it. You buy a book, copyrighted, it's not your book. It's never your book. It's copyrighted. It's oh, theirs. But you don't look at it this way. No one looks at it. So this is a product that you use, this piece of paper. It doesn't mean to be backed by gold. It actually says on it it's meant to be backed by gold or sterling or sterling silver, which has been traded for gold. But it hasn't been like that since 1920. So it's being produced from thin air. My 13-year-old daughter said to me, Dad, if we're so desperate for money, why don't we just print some more? Oh, from the mouths of babes, yeah. Always is. Yeah. And I started to look at that and went, hold on a minute, you're absolutely right. If you have the power to create money from thin air, then why don't you just produce more? So if that is, exists, then it's been manufactured for a reason. Wouldn't they say that if you produce more money, you, you raise inflation because there's more money in circulation? But that's absolute rubbish. The only, ra the, the only time that you raise inflation is if you, if you want to coin more off of the people in the first place. Or some greedy, someone greedy you're you're is it's sitting on top of the pile. It. It's like the pharmaceutical companies, right? My sister used to work for Smith, Klein and Glaxo. Mm. Uh, we were Smith, Klein and French at the time. And she, she worked at, about, she was an accountant. My sister's an accountant. So obviously she deals with all, she was quite high up in her department. And they used to have these meetings about winter coming. And they used to go and sit in these meetings. And the meeting was about how much money they were going to make during the winter period. Mm. Not any, it was about how much <coughs> money they were going to make. Going to Scotland, right now, undertakers have just put their prices up 10%. Because the gas services are putting their prices up 10%. So that it equates that less people can buy gas or afford to buy gas, so more people are going to die, so the undertakers are going to make a killing. Literally. <laughs> but this is how it works. And it's not personal, it's just business. So don't, don't ever, you know, don't take it, you know, don't take it badly. It's not yeah, personal, it's, it's, it? it's yeah. business. Pecking order. Yeah, everything's okay in business. Everything that you've ever seen, everything you ever watch, everything is just repackaged. It's the same content with a new label. Look at fashion. Mm. 